that's a pretty horrible picture, the one on the right, I think. And you know, it's it's a creepy picture. And uh, don't you think? Doesn't it seems like a creepy picture to me? Yeah. And so that's Quetzalcoatl, if I remember correctly. He was an, he was an Aztec uh, dragon god. Uh, and that's the eye of Horus, by by the way, this little thing here. And um, that see the Egyptians, they worshipped the eye. Yeah, well, that's cool because, it, well, why did they worship the eye? Well, wake the hell up and look at the world. That's your salvation to do that. Pay bloody attention, especially to the things you don't want to pay attention to. And use your vision. Have some vision. And you can use your vision to see into the future. And that is your, that's your redemption. And the Egyptians, they didn't know how to say that. But they knew how to represent it. And that's how they represented it. Like, the pupil on that is completely open, completely dilated. And that's a god as far as the Egyptians were concerned. It's Horus, and I'll tell you Horus' story at some point. So, early primates developed a better eye for color, detail, and movement, and the ability to see in three dimensions. Traits that are important for detecting threats at close range. Humans are descended from these same primates. <coughs> All right. So, now, the initiation. Well, when you go into psychotherapy, or when you make any supreme moral effort, which is roughly the same thing, you have to confront that which you do not know. Now, I, I mentioned the pre-cosmogonic chaos and the idea that at the end of Jung's life he sort of thought of the unconscious and the world as the same. And you think, what the hell does that mean? But here's what it means. So let's say you're in a long-term intimate relationship and you get betrayed. Okay, so what is it that you see when you see your partner at the moment you know of the betrayal? Well, you see the pre-cosmogonic chaos. And here's why. Well, it rattles your unconscious up because you don't know anything anymore. You don't know what the past was. Right? You don't know what it was. And it's supposed to be real, and all of a sudden you don't know what it was. And so you come up with wild ideas about what it might have been, and what it represented, and then you don't know what the future is going to be anymore. So then your fantasy fills that space, and you don't know who the hell you're looking at. That's for sure. And you don't know much about human beings, and you certainly don't know anything about yourself. And so all of a sudden, not only is everything in chaos inside your mind, but everything is in chaos in your world. And it actually is, and there's no telling the difference between those two things. You know, and so then, you're just sh shattered. And so then you go talk to a therapist for like two years, and you think, what happened? What was the reality? And the reality is, because who knows what the reality was, like, but as far as you're concerned, the reality is, I better represent this properly in my head. I better figure out who I was, who that person was, what we did together, and what it meant. Because I do not want this to happen again. And so you're healed when you get to the point where you've grasped the bloody moral of the story. What went wrong? And how can I not have that happen again? Because that's the purpose of learning, right? That's the purpose of memory. It's to prepare you for the future. And so you have to pull out of that massive chaos a functional representation that increases your wisdom so that you're not this naive target the next time you enter into a relationship. So at least you can have another relationship without being so traumatized that, you know, you, you're done. And you know, it can take people years to talk that through because this landscape of potential opens up when, when they're betrayed. It's like, well, anything could have been the truth. Well, you, to sort through that, you have to wander through all that mess. And it's really painful and, and emotional as well. You have to sort through all that mess to come out with the new you, right? The renewed you. And so, well, this is a representation of it. This is how people act this out. By, but whatever method he may have been designated, the shaman is recognized as such as only after having received two methods of instruction. The first is ecstatic, dreams, trances, and visions. The second is traditional. Shamanic techniques, names and functions of the spirit, mythology and genealogy of the clan, and a secret language. Well, one of the things that happens, this happens to you even if, if you encounter something terrible like a betrayal. What happens is that you have to take a journey into the domain of morality, essentially. Which is, well, how did I act, and how did that person act, and how should have they acted, and how should have I acted. And so, and that's part of your cultural structure. And so that's the idea of rescuing the dead father from the depths, right? And that's what well, we'll show you some examples of that. <coughs>